Hey everyone, we're back and it's springtime. Boy, does that make a difference when the sun, the sun starts to pop out. So springtime for us means uh, beast mode in the nursery, getting all our transplant ready. It's really crazy when you think about it, but the whole season, everything that's gonna be planted in the garden pretty much starts here in the nursery. So it's a big part of what we do and it's a big part of the winning strategies that we have here on the farm. So the nursery, making sure that we have, you know, everything we need for optimal conditions for the different seedlings that we grow. And <clears throat> a lot of it boils down to some of the systems that we use uh, at the farm. And the systems in a nursery, uh, you know, can take very different forms. It could obviously be super high tech. Uh, you know, nurseries can be standalone nurseries with cement floors and, 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 you know, rolling benches and everything really fancy. Or it can be something less fancy, uh, but that still delivers the optimal growth and the condi ideal, ideal conditions that you need. And this is really the sweet spot that we have here at the farm. And the sweet spot being, it's good enough to grow really high, high quality young transplant, yet it's not an expensive nursery to either operate or to build. And so we can maximize really our profits doing those starts. The basic systems of this nursery, first of all, is that we're heating the greenhouse. It doesn't really matter where you are, what kind of climate you have. Every young transplant has an optimal growth rate that is, con is conditioned greatly by the temperatures. And so heating is a big part of it. Uh, we have, we heat here with propane. It's not the most environmentally friendly, but it's definitely the most cost effective. And so we have one big furnace that's up there and that furnace has a blower in the back uh, and the blower allows us to diffuse the heat through those heating tubes. And the heating tubes is really allow, what really allows us to uh, heat efficiently the nursery. So, the only thing to say about furnaces is that newer furnaces are better quality, they're more uh, fuel efficient and they're less, less susceptible to break. So newer furnaces are always better than older furnaces. And you also always need to have a backup because if your furnace breaks in the middle of the night and temperatures are dropping below frost, you absolutely need to have another one that it can at least keep the nursery uh, you know, uh, above freezing. So we have a backup. This one is not as new. That's something pretty new and every year we need to come and play with it and fix but it's a backup and it works so that's good enough this one later in the season we can even move it and put it into another greenhouse in the in the cucumber house um, when we're planting cucumbers later on in the summer since we're heating and we're in a cold climate here in quebec we want to maximize our, our footprints so that's the reason why we're growing tomatoes in the same space as where we're doing our starts. By doing it that way, it allows us to heat the whole greenhouse and get the heat that we need to grow really early on, early young tomato plants. Uh, so we'll be the first at market with tomatoes while doing much of our starts in the nursery. So that's really what defines, you know, the design of this nursery. You'll see we have the main house and then we have somewhat of a connector which is a smaller house that's, that's connected to it. And this one is lower and it can open and close and we can ideally close it and open from the inside so it becomes the hardening off area also. So that's the design for that. Otherwise, we're using benches uh, here in this nursery. These are benches that can be uh, stacked and moved. So the way they're really narrow and so two people can carry the whole half table and then you can enter and, and leave the greenhouse without having big tables. So smaller tables are really interesting for that. 
Obviously we want the nursery, the, the starts to be a bit lower and we'll put heating tubes under the tables as we move along. And so the heating tubes, they diffuse the heat equally and they allow all the, the, the transplant to get, you know, really the heat where they need it. So heating from the bottom up. So working station doesn't need to be more complicated. The, the important thing is that it's at the, hot, the right height. You want to be working where the table is just underneath your elbows so that whenever you're working you can really be precise and you know you're not over bending and because we're working a lot with small seeds being closer makes a difference with the overall ergonomics. You know, young plants they they don't want to be watered with water that's too cold so that's the reason why we have this this tank this water tank in the greenhouse and it's painted in black so this is the water reservoir from which we use the water to water the seedlings and it's painted black because we don't want to have algae that forms into it. So painting it black does two things. It doesn't allow light to go inside and form algae and it warms it up, which is really the key here. We want to be watering the seedling with um, warm water, at least not too cold. So we don't want to water strictly from the well. The water goes from the well into the tank, then it settles and it becomes a bit warmer and then we have we have a pump that's connected to an expansion tank and so that allows us to water continuously without flipping on and off the pump so it gives us a continuous flow so that's a big part of our system and because we're using well water here and our water is a bit hard we also have a filter that goes through it so not to complicate it, what you see here is also valves, electric valves. These are con connected to a controller that allows us to program the irrigation system in cycles. So that's that. Floating valve is a really clever way to make sure that you can always have your tank filled without filling it yourself. So this valve is really simple. Once it's hit the bottom top, it just stops and that's how we keep the tank full. Always filled with water, warms it up, and then we're watering seedlings with Luke water, which is what we want. So airflow is also really important. So we need to make sure that we have really good airflow because when we're doing the seedlings, dampness and coldness and just like, that's what you want to avoid. So we have the HAF fans. We have four of them here in, uh, here in the greenhouses and then what they do is really circulate so that you know the air doesn't stagnate. So that's another important piece of the puzzle here. Obviously like most growers uh, to ventilate the nursery is just as important as to heat it and we use roll-ups so the classic roll-ups on the sides but we also use these pressure these positive pressure uh, ventilators. And what they do is that they take the air, the, when it's really cold outside, we don't really want to open up the roll-ups because otherwise the, the cold air really comes down to the plant. What we want to be cooling down is mostly the gables and the, high, the highest part of the nursery. So those, those uh, ventilators, what they do is they take the cold air from the outside, they suck it into the greenhouse, and then they diffuse it they diffuse it using those air tubes and so that's kind of a more it's a non-aggressive way to really cool down the greenhouse without having to open up our greenhouse especially in the cold springs or even if we would be in the winters so another another important system really simple and most greenhouse manufacturers sell this is just an inflating fan with a double layer of plastic. And the fan, what it does is that it brings air between the two layers of plastic and it creates about two to three inch of air uh, between the two plastics. And that brings rigidity to the structure, which if there's a snow load or anything like that helps. But most importantly, it insulates. So we have heating, we have watering, we have cooling, and we also have 
monitoring all those systems on a, on a, on a program. And so that's another key part. You know, for many, many years, Modelen and I didn't have that, and we still managed. But to have it, to have to control all those systems uh, on your iPhone really, really makes a difference because you can measure things better and you can, you can manage the overall temperatures much better than if we didn't have it. So another system that's really important to add resiliency to the, to the whole nursery is having a backup power unit, a generator. Uh, you know, having a spare heating unit so that if one breaks, you'll have another. That's really important, but if there's a power, power outage, you also want to make sure that you, both your propane uh, or your heaters can operate and your systems can really operate. And so having a power generating unit on the farm is important. For me, because I use BCS and I, I have a two wheel tractor, this, this generator has been working for us for like 15 plus years. It's high quality. The thing about generators is that you, they need to be maintained quite often if they're a standalone product and that the fact that this connects to my engine, which you know I use all year round, makes this system uh, not necessarily cheaper, but just more robust. I don't need to maintain this generator power unit throughout the season. And so, anyway, whatever you use, you need to have one. That's the take home message. You cannot operate a nursery if you don't have an auxiliary power system, because believe me, it happens all the time. Power outages can be so detrimental to a market gardener. So that's it for this week. I hope you liked the episode. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Really important. It gives us the signal that you guys are into this and that we should keep on producing these. Um, lots more to share coming up. The season is only starting. I hope you guys are doing well. I hope things are growing. Uh, JM out. See you next week.